Good morning, everyone. As always, place your cross on first. You never know what you may go through. You never know what you may encounter throughout the day. You understand? God has all kind of things lined up for you. It's up to you to believe in order to see what God is doing. You understand? They say seeing is believing. Well, in, in regards to scripture, believing is seeing. You understand? Believing is seeing. Just think about that. Believing is seeing. You have to believe first. You know why a lot of non-believers don't believe in God? Because they don't see, because they don't believe. Do you understand? Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Lord Jesus, I thank you for waking me up this morning. Thank you for giving me another chance to get it right. Lord Jesus, I should continue to watch over me, my wife, our kids, our children, our grandkids, Lord Jesus, our loved ones, our family members, our friends, our foes, our enemies, our associates. Lord Jesus, touch them all. Lord, continue to show us favor in our life, favor in the presence of our enemies, favor in the presence of all those who are to stand with us and all those who stand against us. Lord Jesus, I ask you to use me as you seem fit. To bring forth this word in all honesty and all truth. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Today I'm going to read from Luke chapter 6 verse 26. It might be a little while, but it's all good. Alright. Jesus chapter 6 verse 26. Jesus answers them and said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, You seek me not because you saw the miracles, but because you did eat of the loaves and were filled. Now look at look what he's saying. You're not seeking me because of what I did. You even you seeking me for the free ride. You understand? People love to hang around people who just provides for them, but it's not the miracle that they're interested in. They happen that they just this is right before he fed the thousand with fish. You understand? People love free stuff. You seek me because of that. Labor not for the meat which perisheth, but for that with meat which endureth unto everlasting life, which the Son of Man shall give unto you. For him have God the Father sealed. Then said they unto him, What shall we do, that we might work the works of God? Jesus answered and said unto them, This is the work of a God, that you believe on him who he hath sent. So you understand what he talks about believing on him. It's more than just what you think. You got to believe that Jesus is the Christ. They said, therefore, unto him, what sign showest thou then that we may see and believe thee? What does thou work? Our fathers did eat man in the desert, as it is written. He gave them bread from heaven to eat. Then Jesus said unto him, verily, verily, I say unto you, Moses gave you not that bread from heaven, but my father giveth you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is he which cometh down from heaven and giveth life unto the world. Then he said they unto him, Lord, evermore, give us this bread. Man, I, you know, like sometimes as Christians, you get hard, get tired of explaining yourself over and over and again. You can tell, you can see the tension. You can feel it when you read this word. Like, okay, I'm, I'm going to keep explaining this to them. And Jesus said unto them, I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger. And he that believeth on me shall never thirst. But I said to you this, that ye also have seen me and believe not. All that the Father giveth me shall come to me. And him that cometh to me, I will no wise cast out. Now, look at this a key word he's going to say right here. All that the Father giveth me shall come to me. And him that cometh to me, I will no wise cast out. For I came down from heaven, not to do my own will, but the will of him that sent me. And this is the Father's will, which hath sent me, that of all which he hath given me, I should lose nothing, but should raise it up again the last day. And this is the will of him that sent me, that everyone which seeth the Son, and believeth on him, may he have everlasting life, and I will raise him up the last day. Now, this is the thing. Us now, he said, we got to worship him in spirit and truth. We believe, by reading this word, we see Jesus. By believing his word, we see Jesus. We may not see him physically, but we see him spiritually. That's for all us right now. The Jews then murmured at him because he said, I am the bread which came down from heaven. And they said, is not this Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? How is it then that he said, I came down from heaven? Jesus therefore answered and said unto them, Murmur not among yourselves. No man could come to me except the father which hath sent me. Draw him. Did you hear that? No man could come to me except the father which hath sent me. Draw him. I will raise him up the last day. 
It is written in the prophets, and they shall be all taught of God. Every man, therefore, that hath heard and have learned of the Father cometh unto me. So everybody who truly loved God come to Jesus. Not that any man have seen the Father, save he which is God. He hath seen the Father. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me hath everlasting life. Now, yesterday I talked about everlasting life. He that believeth on me hath everlasting life. He that believeth not shall come into my wrath. I am that bread of life. Your fathers did eat manna in the wilderness and are dead. This is the bread which cometh down from heaven, that a man may eat thereof and not die. I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If any man eat of this bread, he shall live forever. And the bread that I will give is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. The, the Jews therefore strove among themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? Do you understand? How can this man give us his flesh to eat? Well, they don't understand what the bread of life is all about. Eat these words. If you read through the Bible, you read through the scriptures all the time. You read in Jeremiah, he said, eat this scroll up. You understand? If people understood the scripture like they should, they would know he's not talking about eating his actual flesh. That's cannibalism. Eating what he tell them. Soak it in. Eat this bread that I'm giving you right now. Verily, verily, I say unto you, except you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Whoso eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood have eternal life, and I will raise him up the last day. But you also, he gave you the commandment upon his death. Eat this bread right here. Eat this bread that I'm giving you, and drink this wine. And remembrance of me is symbolic that you are a follower of Christ. You understand? It's a symbolism. For my flesh is meat indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. He that eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood dwelleth in me, and I in him. As the living Father hath sent me, and I, I live by the Father, so he that eateth me, even he shall live by me. This is the bread which came down from heaven. Not as your fathers did eat manna, and are dead, he that eateth of this bread shall live forever. These things said he in the synagogue as he taught in Capernaum. Many therefore his disciples, when they had heard, had heard this, said, This is a hard saying. Who can hear it? When Jesus knew in himself that his disciples murmured as it is, he said unto them, Doth this offend you? What, and if you shall see the Son of Man ascend up where he was before? It is the spirit that quickeneth, the flesh profit of nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit. Spirit. They are spirits, spiritual, and they are life. But there are some of you that believe not. And what did he say to the people that believe not? They shall suffer my wrath. For Jesus knew from the beginning who they were that believed not and who should betray him. He knew. And he said, therefore said I unto you that no man could come unto me except it were given unto him of my father. From that time, many of his disciples went back and walked no more with him. They understand it. They didn't want to believe truly. But Jesus knew. Just like Jesus know, God knows everything. God knows who's going to follow him and who's not going to follow him. You understand? That's the thing. You know, that's why he said, strive to enter, enter in at the narrow gate. Strive to enter there. Because many I say to you, have tried, will try. But you got to think about it. They try in other ways. They don't want to believe in the Son of God. They don't want to believe in Jesus truly. You know, everybody like free stuff. You understand? They don't care if it's the, the Son of God giving it. As long as it's getting being given. You know, can I give you some examples of people really don't care? People that hate you to death. They still can't get what you give to them. Let's take Tom Donald Trump, for example. So many people hate Donald Trump. Forget Trump. Trump ain't nothing. He's a racist. He's this and that. Did he, give, did he say a stimulus check coming? Man, I can't wait till Trump give us that stimulus check. Well, I know people like, how in the world are you comparing Trump to Jesus? Well, it's the same concept. Many people hate Jesus. But they love what he does. They love what he do. You understand? They don't believe in him. They could care less for him. But he still provides for them too. He said he says rain on the just and the unjust. 
when he fed the people with fish, right? Did he just feed the ones who believed? <laughs> Did he just feed the ones who believed? No. He fed everyone. Now think about this. Now I'm going to hit you with a brick. Again, he did not just feed the ones that believe. He fed people who didn't believe. Right? How did he do that? Well, he just told you he did. Right after that, a lot of people believed not on him. They left off following him. If you read in the other books, you'll see how many it was. Thousands left off following him. And he was left with 12. And one was a devil. So he was left with 11. So God feeds everyone. He doesn't have no respect of persons. He's trying to reach out to everyone. The thing is, people ain't trying to reach out to him. They ain't trying to believe on him. It's their own fault. It's not Jesus' fault. It's not God's fault. People have free will to do as they please. They have free will to lift, left out following him. That's kind of crazy. You're doing all this. If you read before that, they thought Jesus was on a boat, so they got on boats. They tried to find Jesus in the sea. They went all this way searching for him. Searching for Jesus. And then they finally found him on land. And then when they found him, they did all this searching and left him. And he was left with 12. God feeds all his sheep, just like us. We're going to feed believers and non-believers. You understand? How do we know who we're going to gain? The thing is, Jesus knows, but we don't know. So, but the followers of Christ, we're designed to spread the word to everyone. We're not supposed to pick and choose who we give the word to. He said, freely you have received, freely you shall give. You give the word to everyone. Does that mean everyone you give the word to is going to listen to you? No. Everyone didn't listen to Jesus. Everyone didn't soak in his word. Everyone couldn't understand what Jesus had to say. A lot of people left out following Christ. Because they can't stomach his saying. But he said it again. He said it in the spirit. A lot of things in the, in the word, a lot of word in the word of God is spiritual things. God focuses more on spiritual things than material things anyway. Those who worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. I mean, you got to accept his words as truth. And you got to walk in the spirit. You see, he was left off with 12, and one was a devil, so 11. Do the percentage ratio. I talked about this before. Do the percentage ratio. So this also tell you right now. Also, this confirms what some of the apostles said. They went out with us, but they were not with us. They went out, when they started with us, then they left. Now, just think about this. Now, I'm going to break it down to you in a spiritual sense. All right. A lot of these people received the word of God from Jesus. They received it, but some things they couldn't stomach. They started off learning with him, and they went out and did their own thing. Now, if you do the math, that's probably why we got so many different types of churches. Some people believe certain concepts of Jesus, but not all concepts of Jesus. Do you understand? Now you got different churches that teach these different concepts of him. Some people pick and choose what parts of Jesus they want to get out. Well, a true follower of Christ is going to stick to all of it. It's going to believe all of it. The Old Testament, in the beginning was the Word and the Word was God. Revelations, the Book of the Prophets, all the books, Solomon, Song of Solomon. You got to read all this stuff and you're going to accept it all as truth. There's a lot of churches out there right now, people. That's why I say, people say, what is meaning of finding a Bible-based church? Well, I'm going to tell you my interpretation of a Bible-based church. A church that teaches all of it. Don't sway from the word. Not doesn't pick and choose what they want to talk about. A church that's operating in the spirit. You understand how do you know if a church is operating in the spirit? Because you got to be in the spirit yourself. If you're not operating in the spirit, you're going to be drawn away by anything. You understand? You're going to be drawn away by anything. False doctrine. You understand? False believers. Idols. 
You see, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever shall believe on him shall not perish but have eternal life. The key words to that, believe on him. Believe. Believing is way more deep than everything. He said, if you believe me, you'll do what I ask of you. You'll do what I command of you. Don't just be a hearer. Be a doer. Soak these words in. You understand? And also, what he told you, here are the old scripture too. Take this with you. Read the old script. Pay attention. Jesus tells you what to do. You understand? There's some people right now. You can talk to them till you're blue in the face. And they're not going to hear you. Jesus talked to the Pharisees and the scribes till he was blue in the face. You know, I'm just saying, Jesus was in human form. You understand? I'm sure he got angered. Not as we get angered. But I'm sure he got angered sometimes. Like, oh, man, I just told them this over and over again. But the thing is, it's not about Jesus. It's about the will of his father. And Jesus is going to do it to the T. You understand? So, yeah, sometimes as Christians, you're going to have to talk with people who are not going to listen. Why? Because you still want to reach them. Why do you think Jesus talked to them? Jesus didn't stop talking to them. He said he already knew from the beginning who would believe and who wouldn't believe. But then he yet stopped talking to the non-believers. Well, the Bible says, be not unequally yoked with non-believers. Well, as you can see, the word is going to do what it do. He didn't have to push the non-believers away. They left on their own free will. They left on their own free will. If you're a child of God, and you preach this word and all understand truth, and you believe in his word, and you try to operate in the spirit, non-believers are going to fly away from you anyway. Just like they left off following Jesus. So the word does not lie. Because I know somebody was finna say it right there. Well, the word said, don't be unequally yoked with non-believers. Well, the word does what it does on its own. Can you stomach that much? The word is going to do it. The word is going to separate. The word is going to divide. Because everybody's not willing to receive the word of God. I talk to a lot of people about the word. At least every day I'm going to have a conversation with somebody about God. Because God always sends somebody your way. You always have a person to reach. I don't care if it's just one person out of the whole day. Maybe two. Sometimes you might get more. You understand? And some people, you're not going to be compelled to talk to them about the word of God. Why? You'll understand. You will understand. Like being a dead horse, you'll understand. It's useless. You know, I tell people all the time right now, as a Christian, as you grow, you're going to reach a, when you first eat the bread of life, you're going to want to tell everyone. And the thing is, you still do, but I'm going to break it down to you a little bit. You're going to want to tell everyone who's willing to listen about God. Because the bread, like I said, it's like eating that, that fresh piece of cake that you never tasted before. And it's so good. And you got to tell everybody about it. Even if you eat a good piece of cake, some people just be like, man, I don't eat that, man. You know, I'm not, I'm not going to fool with that. So you're going to keep trying to force that good piece of cake on some people. And some people be like, I don't want none. So eventually you're like, well, I don't got to ask them no more. They don't want no more cake. They don't want none of this cake. They don't want to try the cake no more. You understand? So why would I even ask? I'm going to give the cake to some people who want it. <laughs> Do you see what I'm getting at, people? When you first start, you're gonna to try to give everybody the cake, the bread of life. You're gonna to try to give as many people the bread that you can. And some people just gonna refuse the bread. And you're gonna be like, well, let's move on to the next. Let me talk to these people who want the bread. You understand? If they don't want it, I done tried. Time to dust my hands off. Let me extend the bread to others. You understand? Maybe I'll reach this one out of the 99. I'm not going to keep trying the same people over and over again. You understand? 
Those who have ears, will hear. Those who have eyes to see, will see. Those who don't, won't. Fact. But am I saying, am I saying I'm condemning anybody to hell? No. I'm saying there comes a point where you just got to move on. One thing I realized about the word of God and about the Lord, he always communes with everyone. He always talks to everyone. So just because one person stops ministering to you, guess what? God's going to always send another. What's that, that little story they tell about the man that was lost at sea and he was adrift on a piece of wood or something? And somebody came by, hey, I'm waiting for Jesus to come. And somebody else come by, hey, y'all, I'm waiting for Jesus to come. And then another man come by, well, hey, I'm waiting for Jesus to come. Then he dies and he's in heaven. And he was like, Jesus, I was searching for you. I was waiting for you. He's like, I sent this man, I sent that man, I sent that man. I sent, I came in the form of man. But you didn't want it. You didn't want the help. You understand? If you want to go in death in that saying, what's with the conclusion of that matter? What was the whole point of that story? You understand? What was the point of that little small example? Accept who God sends your way. You understand? If you seek Jesus, you're going to see him. And you're going to receive him. Same way with Jesus. I sent, he told, he gave many parables. I sent, first I sent some workers out there. They wouldn't listen to him, so I sent some prophets out there. He wouldn't listen to him, so I'm going to send my only son out there. Maybe they'll listen to him. They yet still didn't listen to him. So God has been trying since the world began to reach as many as he can. Why? Because in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God. Who is the Word? Jesus. So since the beginning, Jesus has been trying to reach people over and over and over again. You think, you remember with Nebuchadnezzar and Daniel and Natshek, Meshach, and Abednego and all them, they were operating in the spirit in a civilization full of non-believers, right? They didn't indulge in none of the things that unbelievers were doing, but God was showing wonders through them for them to be converted. Yet you still had people who were trying to go against them. You still had people trying to go against Daniel. Hey, Daniel won't listen. We finna set up trying to get Daniel killed. Let's put them in the lines. That anybody who don't pray when that, that happens, pray to our God. We gonna they gotta get thrown into the lines then. So they tried to get, they got Daniel thrown into the lines then. And God made it so the lions wouldn't touch him. Why? Because Daniel believed in God. So those non-believers went into that same lines then. What happened to them? They were torn apart. There will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. You understand? God is giving examples. Jesus has given examples of him trying to reach the lost for a long time. You understand? Trying to convert people then. You think Nebuchadnezzar could have, some of these kings in the back of the kings of Babylon and this and that, if they saw the miracles and the works that God did, Egypt, he was trying to reach Pharaoh. God has always been trying to reach the lost. But sometimes, it's just not going to hear. So you move on. Moses walked through the Red Sea. You know. Personally, I wasn't living back then, but I'm sure if I was a non-believer in God, and I saw all the miracles and the wonders that he was doing, for his people, for his children of Israel and Egypt, I guarantee I would have been converted. I would have believed. You understand? But a lot of people fear so many other things. They see all these things, they just won't grasp the concept. 
And it's hurtful. And you know, they think God is an angry God. Let's put it that way. God created you. And he wants you to believe in him. Believe that I created you. Believe that I sent my son. And guess what? You're going to have eternal life. And guess what? You will never hunger. Guess what? You will never thirst. Proof? In the wilderness. They never hunger. They never thirst. Even the non-believers who are with the believers still were fed. You understand? Still were fed. Oh, I'm going to go a little further into you. Let me pause for a second and I will continue.